Hello dear students. Today we will be discussing about measurement of iron losses using wattmeter method. So uh, this particular method is used for measurement of iron losses in sheet material or strip type of magnetic material. The strip material which is to be tested uh, is assembled as a closed magnetic circuit in the form of a square. So first we need to uh, bring this material in the form of a square shaped arrangement and then we will be using that to test. We will be arranging it in something like uh, similar to a transformer kind of a core and then we will be testing it. So one of the squares that, that is generally used is Epstein square. So this is the or original form of squares that was introduced and in this particular square there are four strips or you have four cores which, which are uh, stacked together or brought together so this is one strip and you have the another one here then you have another here and the last one here so you have four strips forming together to form the or bring, coming together to form the square and uh, these 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 are uh, very thin thin sheets which are insulated from each other using some insulating material like uh, tissue paper or something and these are stacked together and uh, the corners are brought together and clamped like this. So corners will be looking like this. So one, one of the piece will be kept and the other piece will be coming from this direction. Okay, and then the next one will be from this side. So in that way overlapping, in that overlapping manner we are forming the corners and we are clamping them together. So before we clamp it, we'll be inserting these uh, windings or in, insert, so, sorry, inserting these course into the winding so already the winding is here these are the windings that you can see copper windings so these windings are uh, wound in a cylindrical manner or circular manner and the um, core is slipped into this magnetizing winding and the ends of the winding are connected together to form continuous core and you have uh, primary as well as secondary available in the in this particular winding so you are able to supply some input voltage and then you are able to take out the output also from this set of bindings. So this is the way the Epsilon square is being constructed. Now the square that we we are interested in is Lodge Fisher square. This is an improvement or modification of Epsilon square. So here what we can see is that you have just like in the normal case we have four cores. One, two, three and four cores are there. But uh, instead of the uh, instead of uh, bringing to the corner pieces or bringing to the course at the co corner sides we have a separate corner pieces mm? right angle corner pieces here so these uh, yellow color orange colored ones are the corner pieces so these are separate corner pieces which are uh, brought or arranged in such a manner and then they are stacked or they are punched together so this is this is the punching that is being done so these are punched together to form a complete a square here also before punching or before bringing in the corner pieces we are uh, sliding it into the magnetic uh, wind magnetizing winding here also you have primary and secondary here you can see that you have two winding two inputs are here so this can be taken considered as a primary winding similarly you can take out the output from the secondary end of the secondary windings also here also the insulators individual strips are insulated from each other and here we have bent corner pieces okay then ultimately we will be stacking everything together and then punching it or clamping it one thing that you have to remember is that uh, the material that we use for the corner pieces that should be very similar or same as the material that we use for the core so it has to be uh, uh, core, uh, same material and overlapping has to be minimum at this, this region because once overlapping increases the area increases so the overlapping has to be minimum and some adjustments in the reading has done in order to uh, adjust the uh, increase in area due to the overlapping then you have uh, primary windings and secondary windings um, available you have two number of secondary windings available and a single uh, single primary winding which is of a larger wire with a larger cross-sectional area so this is the way uh, the what uh, uh, the circuit diagram for measuring of iron losses using wattmeter method 
so here you can see that uh, the test specimen is weighed and then before before assembling it is weighed and then effective cross sectional area is determined initially so area is determined earlier and the primary winding is connected to the supply and also it carries the current coil current coil of the watt meter so you have the primary winding which carries the current coil of the watt meter then you can see that you have second you have two number of secondary windings this is s1 and this is s2 this is s1 s2 so s1 uh, is connected to the pressure coil of the watt meter and s2 is connected to an electrostatic voltmeter which can determine the voltage directly which is developed in the secondary and s1 and s2 are identical coils that is they they have same thickness and same number of turns so that the voltage produced at the output or the producer induced in the secondary winding will be very similar mm, in s1 as well as s2 and in, in order to measure that we are using a electrostatic voltmeter okay and the magnetizing the supply frequency is uh, fixed and the magnetizing current is currently suggested to provide a required maximum value of flux density which is required for the testing and uh, while doing the testing we will be re uh, uh, noting down the readings of wattmeter and voltmeter and uh, the voltmeter will be reading the armas value of induced voltage as we have already discussed now the value of induced voltage that is obtained will be e is equal to uh, some factor kf is a form factor for, for the ac which is equivalent to 1.11 kf into b max which is observed maximum flux density b max dash as which is the effective cross section area of the specimen and f is a frequency and n2 is a secondary number of turns here the induced voltage is at the secondary so this is secondary number of turns n2 so this this particular equation is the emf induced equation for a transformer so this comes from e is equal to n d5 by dt okay so here d5 instead of flux you have uh, b into area and uh, this dt the time is taken as 1 by t which is equal to f okay and n is already there and you have some constant of uh, form factor kf so this derivation you will be seeing in the next 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 semester where you will be learning the transformer okay and uh, e is equal to 4 uh, so ultimately you will be getting 4.44 uh, b max af as f into n2 now the observed value of flux will be equal to the true value of flux in the specimen plus flux in the air gap between specimen and the search coil okay that is uh, uh, whatever the value that you observe will be equal to true value plus the air gap flux so uh, once you have the core core wound and uh, winding is also uh, wind tightly even if you wind wind the coils tightly you will be having some air gap between them so you'll be have, you have to consider the flux that is uh, produced due to the air gap or overcoming the subflux that is produced to overcome the air gap so that is also considered as well as the true value of flux in the specimen now the observed value of flux that is b max dash into as is given by b max into as where b max is the true true value of flux density that is there or true value of flux into a this is ac I am sorry this is AC which is a uh, cross sectional area of the specimen actual cross sectional area of the specimen and AS includes the cross sectional area of the specimen plus the air gap and plus flux in the air gap between specimen and the search coil that is mu zero H which gives you the flux density in the air gap uh, into AC minus AS AC minus AS is the uh, AC minus AS is the effective uh, area for the air gap so hm is a magnetizing force corresponding to the maximum flux density which can be obtained from the bh curve so here we are trying to find out the true value of flux this is the factor that we are trying to find out now the true value of flux will be equal to b max which is equal to b max dash minus mu zero h into ac by as minus one okay so this is the true value of flux in the specimen now the wattmeter reading hmm? coming to the wattmeter reading what will be the wattmeter reading so wattmeter will be reading some power 
so that power will be equivalent to the iron loss of the specimen whatever the loss that is there in the specimen plus the copper loss of the secondary winding surface so uh, your total uh, reading that is given by the watt meter will be including both the iron loss as well as the copper loss so we have to reduce the copper loss from the watt meter reading in order to get the iron loss now pi is the total iron loss p is the watt meter reading v is the voltage applied to the pressure coil of the watt meter and e is the uh, voltage induced in the second winding or in the electrostatic voltmeter rp is the resistance of the pressure coil what um, resistance pressure coil winding rc is the resistance of the uh, coil s1 or the secondary winding s1 and ip is a pressure coil current now the voltage induced in uh, in this uh, winding s1 hmm? which will be equal to the voltage induced in s2 okay which will be equal to e because number of turns are equal and identical you have identical number of turns and identical winding so the uh, voltage induced in the primary winding as well as the secondary winding will be e which will be equal to ip into rp plus rc okay so ip is the current in the pressure coil circuit into rp is the resistance of the pressure coil winding and rc is the resistance of the secondary winding of the uh, of the test specimen so this will give you the induced emf so this emf can be equated in terms of the current and the resistance now the total copper loss in the secondary winding will be e squared divided by rp plus uh, rc or it is i squared r hmm? what the in any way you can find it out it is i squared r that will be uh, turning out to be e squared divided by rp plus rc so this will be the uh, total copper loss already uh, e is there so once you calculate uh, ip sorry it is ic yeah ip okay current in the pressure coil circuit ip squared uh, into the resistance you will be getting this particular uh, equation okay now uh, this is the total copper loss in the secondary winding hmm. the copper loss can be given as i squared r or it can be given by v squared by r in, in any way you can find it out uh, both will give you the same since you have only resistances available now the total iron loss in the specimen plus the co total copper loss which is the reading reading of the uh, your particular uh, watt meter okay so the reading of the watt meter is given by total iron loss plus copper loss which will give you one by p into e by e by e where p is the watt meter reading and you are multiplying with this particular factor now why do you have this factor this factor is introduced so that uh, in order to reduce or neglect the drop in uh, voltage due to the uh, uh, pressure coil uh, pressure coil resistances as well as primary resistances prime uh, sorry secondary winding resistances that is you have this secondary winding and you are connecting the pressure coil across the secondary winding so you'll have the resistances of this particular circuit so you'll have a drop here so the total power that is read by the wattmeter will be bi cos phi okay and already uh, uh, the losses iron losses will be uh, very lagging in nature and it, it is uh, normally inductive in nature so you'll have a low power factor perfect condition so due to the resistances in the winding you will have large errors introduced so what you have to do is that in order to reduce that you are dividing this p by v so that you will be getting i into cos phi then you multiply with e which is being read by the electrostatic voltmeter so you'll be getting e i cos phi which which is a more accurate read uh, value when compared to the earlier case so that that is a value that that is expected here p into e by v now the total iron loss will be the watt meter reading which is adjusted minus the copper loss so this is a copper loss so once you do this you will get the uh, total iron loss in the specimen now specific iron loss which is iron loss per unit uh, volume or uh, per kilogram a specific iron loss can be calculated by dividing the total iron loss with the weight of the specimen so that's why you calculate uh, the weight initially before you start that test 
okay so the uh, so specific iron loss is iron loss developed by uh, total weight okay. so that is your specific iron loss now uh, now you have to separate uh, hysteresis and eddy current losses from the iron loss values so this can be done by doing the test for different frequencies now you have done uh, fixed the frequency and did all the calculations or took the reading now you have to do the same procedure for another frequency or number of frequencies and once you do that and you plot it you have some relationship between hysteresis loss and frequency as well as eddy current loss and frequency and once you compute that you will be able to separate the values of hysteresis loss and eddy current loss and this particular experiment you will be i think you will be doing it in circuits lab or uh, in machines lab one of the labs you will be separating hysteresis and eddy current losses so there will be uh, uh, there you will be seeing this particular uh, separation of losses in detail so uh, that's how you identify the iron losses in a magnetic material thank you